Hello friends, this video on microorganisms, friend and foe, part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us look at the diseases which are caused in plants by pathogens. Some common diseases in plants by pathogens are rust of wheat, late blight of potato, citrus anchor, Power, powdery mildew. So these are some of the names are quite fancy, right? So, so the names of these diseases seem quite fancy, but they have been named after some of the symptoms which occur in that particular disease. So let us talk about rust of wheat. What is the meaning of rust? Normally we use the term rust with, with, with the regards to iron. So we say iron gets rusted, right? What happens? How does a rusted iron look like? It has a reddish layer formed on it and that is called the rust and that process of formation of that layer when you keep iron in presence of water for a long time. So that is called rusting. So in a very similar way on the wheat plants also you have a layer of reddish yellowish color and that is why it, it gives the appearance of rust. So it is called rust of wheat. So here the pathogen is a fungus, which is Puccinia rust fungus. Now there are different stains of Puccinia which causes this disease and all of them causes different types of rust. Like in some the rust is black in color, some, in some the rust is brown in color and in some it is yellow in color. So Puccinia triticinia causes black rust. Puccinia recondita causes brown rust and Puccinia striformis causes yellow rust. So different stains causes different types of rust. So how the pathogen enters? It enters via soil through infectious spores. So there are spores which are capable of spreading the infection. So these spores are present in the soil. Now the plants also receive all its nutrients from the soil. So through that means only it also gets these infectious spores also. So now in the picture you can see how exactly it looks like. So you see on the leaves of a wheat plant you actually see the rusted structure. So these structures are nothing but nobody has painted them like this. This is due to the presence of this fungus. Some of the symptoms, what are the symptoms which are seen during this? Small elevated structures called pistules on leaf blades. So you see these structures, they are elevated structures. So if you touch the surface of the leaf, you can feel the presence of these elevations. So these structures are called pistules. So you see here, these structures are pistules. Patches are formed in extreme cases. Now when they keep on increasing, so as it increases, what happens? A lot more such pistules happen. So many pistules gather together to form patch kind of structure. Pistules are not only seen on leaf blades, they are also seen on stems. So as in this picture you can see, they are formed on the stems. How can we treat it? Applying fungicides at an early stage can be helpful because fungicides will kill the fungi but it will not harm the plant. So that means these fungi will get killed and that, that's how the rust can be removed. But then again when it increases too much or when it spreads too much, in that case fungicides might not be that helpful. The next is late blight of potato. So what happens here? So you see here a sliced potato, how it looks like. It has uh, the, the boundaries are kind of rotten and you see blackish structures inside. So this is how a potato which is diseased look like. So this is caused by a pathogen which is again a fungus like organism called Phytophthora infestans. So this is not exactly a fungus but it is a fungus like organism, an organism which is similar to fungus. How it enters? Through infectious pores transmitted by water or wind. So when air blows, so that time these pores also get carried away by the wind or by through water. So that's how it reaches and it can enter inside the body of a plant. Wet or humid conditions favor infection because wet condition or humid condition means more water. So through water these infectious pores might come. It mostly affects potato, tomato, etc. So we you see late blight of potato, late blight of tomato. So they are quite common. Symptoms, potato leaf lesions. So you see this is the leaf of the potato plant. So you see the lesions on the leaves. Reddish brown discoloration of potato tuber. So even the tuber 
the 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 potato the part which we eat so that part also they also have brown colored lesions on it and also there is some the color also changes to reddish brown brown lesions on the stem so not only the leaves but also the stems have brown lesions treatment applying appropriate fungicides at appropriate time can be helpful because this is also caused by fungus so fungicides will be able to help citrus sankar citrus citrus is named after the citrus fruits so this type of disease is seen in the citrus plants like lemon oranges so they are all examples of citrus fruits so the pathogen here is a bacteria called xanthomonas axonopodis so this is the bacteria which causes citrus sankar and how it enters inside the plant through stomata or wounds on leaves so wherever there are open pores on the leaves through that this bacteria enters infection can spread through water or wind or contaminated equipment so because for plants that is the only mode of infection because plants cannot move from one place to another so the pathogens need to be carried away by other agents like wind water air so that's how it, the infection will spread it affects the citrus plants as i mentioned just now and that is why the name is citrus sankar so if you talk about the symptoms the the leaves fall prematurely so before time the leaves fall lesions on leaves stems and fruit so you can see how the lesions are on the stem leaves similar lesions are seen on stems as well as fruits premature drop of fruits so basically you don't economically also if a plant or a citrus plant is suffering from this disease so you will not be able to get mature fruits out of that plant because the fruits will drop off much before time so that is one disadvantage now if you talk about uh, its harm as such uh, the citrus fruits from a plant which is suffering from citrus sankar is not harmful for human consumption so it is fit for human consumption but it can affect the plant productivity because as the fruits will drop off before time so the plant's productivity will reduce so that is one disadvantage that plant productivity will reduce plant productivity decreases so that is one disadvantage the next disadvantage is that even though the fruits are safe to eat but when you look at the fruit so they will have that kind of um, the lesions on the fruits the presence of lesions on the fruits will make it look really bad and ugly so by looking at it you don't feel like eating it so therefore what happens is it becomes unlikely to be sold in the market because when you go to a market for example to buy fruits any fruit so you pay for it right so before you buy it you actually look at the quality of the fruit that if it is fine or not now if you if the shopkeeper gives you a fruit which has lesions all over its surface so will you buy that fruit just by looking at it you will feel that it is rotten now even though it citrus sankar is not harmful for human consumption but just by that ugly look you will not buy that fruit so that's how the sell of these fruits also decrease a lot so that means also there is a loss involved treatment there are no specific treatment pr procedure so far citrus farming becomes difficult and expensive that be that's because the sale decreases but and also the plant productivity also reduces so therefore the entire farming becomes very difficult and expensive because there are no specific treatment also so you cannot treat the plants as well so that is citrus sankar so let us see the next one that is powdery mildew why it is called powdery mildew due to the appearance of powder like structure so this here the pathogen involved is fungi many species of the order ericephales so many there are many fungi which belongs to this particular species they all cause powdery mildew the pathogen again here also it enters the same way through infectious pores which might get transmitted through wind it is extremely sensitive to heat and light so if a plant which is uh, infected with powdery mildew if it is left to sunlight for a long time then the infection tend to reduce because this these type of pathogens are very sensitive to heat and sunlight it affects many crops like 
beans, beet, carrot, lettuce, melons, peas, etc. In fact, there are uh, many other vegetables and crops which get uh, which can get in, impacted by this particular pathogen, which causes powdery mildew. Now, in this picture, you can see how powdery mildew looks like. So, on the leaf surface, you see some white colored powder appears. So, due to this type of appearance, it is called powdery mildew. So, let us see the symptoms white powdery covering. Now, this white powdery covering can be in less amount, it can also be in more amount. So, here in this leaf, if you see too much of that powdery substance is present. So here you can see the leaves of uh, oak and here you can see the leaves of pumpkin. So the, all these leaves might get impacted with this white powdery substance and that is why the name is powdery mildew. The leaves curl, so the leaves do not remain straight. It sometimes tends to curl, lesions appear, colored patches on leaves, stems or fruits. Now due to the presence of lesions or colored patches, you get to know that okay this plant is suffering from some disease. How can we treat it? Applying fungicides or oils or sulfur can treat the disease. So these can be helpful. Any of these can be helpful. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.